The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. You ready for this week or what, man? We got the election happening tomorrow. That's going to be an all week affair. We have the Federal Reserve probably going to be speaking on Thursday when there's a decent chance we don't even know who's won the election yet rightfully so that's how it's going to play out folks that's how democracy is going to work get ready for it man pennsylvania in particular they can't start counting early ballots until tomorrow at 7 a.m that number is going to keep trickling in for days if it's close and it looks to be close we're not going to know and we're going to have a fed meeting in the mix and we got volatility this morning we have yields pulling back a bit from friday's acceleration but let's kick things off with the s p's flat to the tick flat to the tick right now s and p's at 57.58 you see the slide we had from last week on wednesday thursday friday action on the jobs number market adds 12,000 jobs we got a spike in the tenure up to about 4.38 percent we've pulled it all back we're at about 4.28 right now nasdaq 100 down about 30 points that's about one tenth percent 20,123 you get the dow slightly in the red off by about 50 points 42,159 and the russell negative by three now getting into the interesting part of the market so far this morning you have a little bit of higher price in crude trading up a buck 84 at 71.33 we got to jump to notes and bonds and then we'll jump to the dollar and then we'll jump to gold because there was your jump you don't often see huge reactions overnight. Not recently on the weekend, but boy, we got it this time, man. You got the tenure. We are up right now by 19 ticks, and we have a yield. Yeah, we're going to be even lower than we were this morning. How about 4.275? 4.27. We were at 4.38. Folks, 11, 12 basis points from where we were on Friday. Mammoth move. The election seems to be tightened. You have a couple polls out there for Harris. Whether you want to believe them or not, that's your take on things, man. But nonetheless, it is going to be a remarkably tight election. That's how the data looks right now. Market's pulling back a bit. And so you have what? You have yields going down a bit with the tenure, as I just mentioned, 4.27 almost. That is putting some weakness in the dollar. You talk about weakness, man. We were at 104.20 almost, 104.30 on Friday. How about 103.65? Just like that for the dollar. Dollar weakness, yield weakness coming into things and then we jump over to gold you got a weak dollar that's going to help gold a bit gold up about six dollars kind of right where we're chopping around middle of the day on friday with gold up by six dollars at 27.55 right now we jump over to the vix this vix is going to go nowhere until we get some resolution on the election man 22.52 and as i said listen we're going to be getting headlines all night tomorrow and yes there's a dramatic chance that if one of the candidates does better than the others and there's some clarity there, maybe the election is not hanging on Pennsylvania or some of those other states and it look like, looks like there could be a clear victory. Yes, it's possible for sure. If it's a close one, and boy, they've all been pretty close over the last two, three elections, right? If it's a close one, then the market's going to have to wait. The whole world's going to have to wait. The country's definitely going to have to wait to find out who won. That's how democracy works, folks, all right? You know, you get into the politics, the one thing that... that I want for all of us is right believe in democracy this is how it's going to play out you're going to hear all the rhetoric that's going to go on throughout the week but uh if you're waiting for those ballots man that is it that's how it's designed pennsylvania they don't count the early ballots until they start tomorrow morning and it's going to take uh three to four days probably to count those ballots and that's going to push us all the way through like friday potentially man hope it doesn't hang over the weekend but yes you're going to talk about pushing all week the VIX 2250. Market does not like uncertainty. We got a lot to talk about this morning, folks. We'll jump through some equities. Markets basically flat to slightly in the red this morning. We'll come back. We'll talk some equities. We'll talk some yields. We'll talk some currencies. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Markets shopping around right here. Basically flat to the tick again on the S&Ps. And as I mentioned, it's going to be interesting how we go forward. Now, the Fed is going to matter on Thursday. But it is interesting that how is the market going to react on Thursday? All expectations are that they're going to cut by 25 basis points. All right, we'll pull up the CME FedWatch tool. like to pull that one up occasionally, but basically baked in right now. A quarter point cut is what is coming on Thursday. And you talk about being data dependent where we go we're going to be like right in the grip of a presidential election probably hanging in the balance waiting for those final mail-in ballots we'll see where they go but it is remarkable that you're going to have chairman powell speaking thursday afternoon as you probably have news organizations waiting for every single drop of an update of where mail-in ballots are how many have been submitted and how many have been accepted in terms of being processed, right? They get submitted, there's a lag in terms of the time it takes for those to be accepted because of the process they have to go through. CNN, uh, excuse me, CBS, 60 Minutes, talked about great segment a couple weeks ago talking about 
Pennsylvania in particular. They had the Secretary of State on there, and they were talking about those ballots come in. They come in in two envelopes. They have to be opened by hand. First person opens them. Open by hand, a second envelope. They have to be back folded so they can go through the machine. It takes many minutes for each ballot to be processed, and they're going to have so many of them, man, it is going to take a long time. So we'll see where we go forward, man. But yeah, um, get ready for the volatility to continue this week going forward. And you jump back to yields here, okay? And boy, you talk about a recoil, okay? And we're still going. Look at this. You got the tenure up yet again. And we're talking about a yield now. Yeah, we'll call it 4.27. We are under that. As you're back to 110.19 right now, look at this. We're at 109.27. Man, Larry Pesavento was texting me on Friday saying, man, these bonds look weak, right? And they did. You talk about it, man. That first thrust higher on that jobs number, and then they couldn't find a bid for the entire day. Could not find a bid. You jump over to the 30 year. How about that, right? Look at it. We get it all back. 30 years up a point and a half. More than that. Almost two full points from the lows. And it, it was just a constant slide to higher yield on Friday. And that's been reversed a bit. Now, where does that come from? Okay. It comes from some of the polls out there saying, man, things are tightening. You got the Trump trade out there. And this is where, man, politics and economics merge. Of course they do. Because whoever's in charge of the country is going to have an impact on policies, regulations, etc. All right. Now, yeah, this is the one. I got two two articles up here. Yeah, this is the one. Here we go. So you had U.S. polls out there, and you had a couple of them. Okay, you had an Iowa one that put Harris actually ahead. Okay, you have an ABC News poll that gives her an edge nationally. It's a bummer they almost put these out. Nationally means nothing. Okay, nothing, which is a bummer. That's not quite how it should be, I think, in the long term. It's not how it was quite designed. Nonetheless, that's how we've designed democracy right now. The national poll actually means nothing. Show me Pennsylvania, man. Show me Iowa. All right, show me some of these. And this is the one that Trump is going crazy over this morning. You got a Des Moines poll showing her ahead 47 to 44. Either way, it's going to be a really tight race, man. Okay, that's the bottom line. Can't disagree on that. It's going to be a tight race. That's how it looks like it's shaping up right now. And a little bit surprising on some of that data. Now, of course, you say, and this is where, you know, folks, Trump says the poll is suppression and should be illegal. Okay? You hear what you want, but that's not how things work. It's not suppression. It shouldn't be illegal. It's a poll. He doesn't like it because it shows that he's losing. Get ready for all the rhetoric, folks. Okay? Get ready for it. Now, there was a September poll that showed Trump with a four-point lead over Harris. Okay? And they had a June poll showing him with an 18-point lead over Biden. Well, Biden's not in the race anymore, thankfully, for all of us. Okay? <laughs> That's the one thing. All right? Um, but, yes, it is a very, very tight race. And it's remarkably so if you put it into where, you know, if you talk about Iowa, man. Iowa is not supposed to be a Harris stronghold, and it's not. But is it a toss-up? Even if it's a toss-up, you had Trump leading Biden by 18. Okay? Now, Biden was quite a drag on the ticket for obvious reasons, all right? But even looking at, you know, where you are there, this is not some crazy pollster, folks, okay? It's not. She's been correct in 8, 12, 16. Where was 20 in there? Well, we'll see. Um, but nonetheless, you know, he's he's commended her in previous polls when he was up by 18. It's just a data point, but you better believe it because it's a data point to be believed that something is going on. It's very tight. Okay, and I speak to you because, you know, the Trump trade, some of these election predict prediction markets have just been wildly swinging, wildly. I'm not sure the accuracy of some of those because you have what you have predicted, you have poly market, and you have call sheet. They're vastly different markets. Have you seen this one? Because this is the one that makes my head scratch dramatically. There's got to be arbitrage opportunities here. Oh, where is it? It was on the, here it is. Yeah, on the front page, okay? Let me see if this blows this up. You want a good arbitrage opportunity, man. You got to have some arbitrage opportunities on this one. And they, it's too bad they don't make it a little bit clearer. But here's just the simple math here. Poly market has Trump 58 to 42, okay? Kalshi, which just became legal in the U.S., has Trump 56 45. Predict it. Has Harris 
square that one, man. Where is the arbitrage opportunity? There's got to be an arbitrage opportunity somewhere. Now, you got a variety of different markets everywhere here. Poly market, don't think that's even legal in the U.S. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Kalshi is legal in the U.S. Predict it, also legal in the U.S. The thing about predict it that gets interesting, okay, is that predict it, because I've been on predict it before, okay? I'll tell you the kicker. I bet on Biden in 2020 after the election was over. <laughs> I know. But guess what? The market was pricing in. The Trump was trying to overturn the election. I bet that that wasn't going to happen. I, I hope I have the confidence to bet that again this year, depending on what happens. Okay, but I bet it wasn't going to happen. And thankfully, democracy hold held and Mike Pence had a spine in there. Remarkable that I could actually make money after the election. I'm talking about like after, after the election, folks. Leading up, I'm talking about late December. You could bet on Biden with odds for money. But the thing about predicted is they take a substantial fee upon withdrawal. So there's all these different fees that go into these. Nonetheless, look at the divergence of these three markets and where they are. Nonetheless, it's going to be a wild one, folks. And from a market perspective, right, get ready for it. These are the types of swings that you better be ready for in yields, in dollars, right? The 30-year, the 10-year. Yeah, and it's going to persist. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's a bummer in that Pennsylvania could have righted that ship, folks. When you, you know, if you're not liking the results and how long they're taking, just remember this was by design, okay? By design. Yeah. And yeah, great question. DJT, I don't that I don't think that indicates anything, folks. I mean, would you really be holding if you ran this thing up from 11 to 55? Can't fault anybody taking a little bit of money. Because where does that go? But I don't know. Nonetheless, you're basically flat on DJT. Market slightly in the red. We're coming back for the opening bell, folks. We'll talk some equities. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education 
educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. S&Ps kick off the trading week, and it's going to be an exciting one. As I said, we're up by one point. You catch a little bit of a bid there in the last few minutes coming into the opening bell. We're up by one point. The S&Ps, NASDAQ 100, down by 20. Dow off by 57 on the Russell, negative by three right now. Yeah, the most interesting component of this market, man, is these yields and the dollar. You get the 10-year right now sitting at about 4.27%. And the dollar with the biggest reaction of all almost, right? The dollar, 103.68. You got lower than we were any point on Friday at 103.57. The dollar has been remarkably strong. And we'll see how that price is in when we go forward. And you got gold. A little bit of a bid, but all things considered, you look at the weakness in the dollar right now. Gold could have had a bigger pop. But as it's happened, right, as gold has strengthened dramatically up to 104 and change, that hasn't held gold back. So what's remarkable is that as we've seen the dollar weaken a little bit, hasn't quite given gold the same exact pop that you may expect. You're only up by $2 right now on the session, and we have a much weaker dollar contract. And so, yeah, not exactly that same relationship that you normally be uh, akin to. And the S&P is negative by 2. We jump around. Let's see how some of these FANG stocks. FANG, Magnificent 7. When's the last time we talked about the FANG, right? Not <laughs> uh, Apple shares. Down by three quarters percent. We're going to talk a little bit of China in a second. Uh, Apple down by a buck sixty-five. We'll go short term, challenging the lows we had on Thursday on their numbers. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft down about half a percent. Strong numbers from Amazon last week. They give back some of it. We're down about a percent right now for Amazon shares. You jump over to Google. Look at all these, man. They're all Nasdaq 100 only negative by sixty, but I'm covering all the big equities, man, and we're down almost a percent. Meta down by one point five percent right now. Netflix shares down about half a percent to 752. Yeah, we jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla down another 2% to 24332. I'll tell you folks, if you're in Tesla and we do have a Tesla short going on in Market Insights right now, okay? And you know what's great is in their sponsored direction. The way we did it is you got these single stock ETFs, man. There's a one to one bear in Tesla. You want to go short Tesla? You just buy TSLS. You got plenty of shares for liquidity in this equity, right? What are we doing? This is a 15 minute chart. We're doing 165,000 shares. We're doing 160. Yeah, you're not doing millions, okay? You are pushing 40, etc., okay? But not enough to move this market. And in, um, and you know, what's great is this is a great example, folks, of and it doesn't always work out this way, okay? But it doesn't have to be rocket science. That's the thing. My dad would talk about ice, a visual area, right, of support or resistance, okay? Could this be an A to B, C to D? You better believe it could. There's your B point, okay, about 265, but we really couldn't get above it. And you're bumping up. This is the fourth time you're challenging this level, okay, of 266. Doesn't mean this thing is a dog, and I don't think I'm going to hold this one through election. Listen, you want to, you're in market insights, you got this thing short, you want to push your luck, you want to press it, go for it. But you better believe you're opening yourself up to a massive loss overnight. And one of the coolest parts of this trade is you got your back up against the wall. Okay, we went short Tesla, something like 268, 265, something like that. TSLS was trading at like 1340, 1350, something like that. And I wasn't going to give it much. I said 276. You get above 276. Okay, you give yourself a little room, you're out. Back's against the wall. And yeah, you got this thing trading down almost 10% over the past six days. Doesn't have to be rocket science, folks. All right, so it's a great example of finding patterns on a short-term basis, finding visual areas of support and resistance. Now, could this thing have just blown through there? You better believe it could have just blown through, okay? And that's why you have stops. And I don't think I'm willing to take the volatility on the overnight. You got a nice trade in there on the short side. So if you are in market insights, look for updates. I said today, tomorrow, put one out. Because, yeah, there's a very real chance that we get out of that trade today or tomorrow before the volatility election begins. When you got a slide of, yeah, you're down, what, $32? You're down 10% from where this thing was trading at a year ago. Oh, excuse me, a month, uh, a week. Look at me, year, month, week. Um, this market... 
Yeah, cannot stand uncertainty. And you're probably going to just slowly adjust to the fact that we have uncertainty for the next week, folks. That's probably how it's going to play out. Because uh, very hard to see any clarity tomorrow night. Okay. Now, we've had mail-in ballots for some time, but now we have them in a way that they represent a substantial amount of the votes being tallied. And again, you know, shame on Pennsylvania and the electorates there not getting their to act together and allowing for the early mail-in ballots to be counted prior to Election Day. No reason why that couldn't have been done so that we do find out on Election Day who wins because certain individuals are going to use that time to their advantage to smear the electoral process. Okay, Believe in what you want. And I, there's, the political discourse is great, but that is part of democracy and it's going to play out. And I, I think we all need to get ready for what's going to happen in the next uh, few days in terms of the rhetoric and all that stuff, okay? Because it's coming, and this market's not going to like it. That's a very hard to see this market finding a bid with so much uncertainty when you talk about the election and the Fed out there, right? What's the impetus? Are you buying through the moon right now? No way. Why are you going to buy through the moon, man? We're, we're, we're 150 points away from all-time highs in the S&P. Okay, we kicked off the year at 4,700. We're trading at 5,700. Investors want a little bit of clarity before they put more money in play in this market, and I can't fault them. I mean, it's part of the reason why I like the Tesla trade in the same degree, right? You always like to have the wind at your back, and it was very difficult to imagine when the S&Ps were pushing 5,950 and we had volatility of the election coming down the line that you were going to get a dramatic push higher in that volatility, right? So you got your... the you know, anyway, a lot of risk premium right now in this market, rightfully so. Rightfully so. And we got the VIX spiking at about 23. That's recent spikes we've had. That's the area you were at in October, and that's also pretty close to the area you were at in September. All right. And folks, get out there and vote no matter what. That's the main key. I believe in America. I love the discourse we have in the den, man. I love it. That's the way that a, a democracy, a democracy is a living, breathing thing. Right. It just don't take it for granted. All right. I got Tommy, who's three years old. And I always think about protecting democracy 40 years into the future when he's my age. Right. Get out there and vote. I believe in America. I believe in even if I disagree with people in the den, I love the discourse. OK. And that's what makes a democracy great. You get out there and you make sure everybody votes and the collective soul of this country will get it right. That's what I believe in. And that's that's the truth, man. You got to you got to get out there and vote. That's the key. So get out there and vote if you already haven't, folks. All right. Let's see what we're doing with yields right now. Can't help but because this is the move, man, going on. We stagnating a bit? Yeah, we're stagnating a bit. Chopping around at 110.17 on a longer-term basis, right? Look at that move that you had on Friday. It would be remarkable if that was your final thrust, right? Maybe that was the final thrust. We get to a high of 4.38 on the 10-year. And we're right at the 618 is where you were on the 10-year. And now we got to update that. We're sitting at about 4.27%. And the dollar. Because, boy, the dollar move is the biggest one of them all. Look at that dollar move, man. Right? Look at that dollar move. It just takes out all of Friday's move and then some. That could be a nice bearish engulfing. You almost got the entirety of this chart going back to October 21st almost. Yeah, you didn't quite get the top portion of it. But you can see that takes out everything from the top of that range, which is, again, right on that 618. And we'll finish it up with gold as we come in. GC, 2748. Yeah, remarkable action, man. Watch out for that gold contract because if we get this, you know, gold should be a little bit stronger on that dollar weakness. But gold holding steady at about 2748. We'll come back. We'll talk some China and some chips. Are you ready to right take back. charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. 
TFNN Educating Investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P's negative by seven, all the markets in the red to kick things off. You got the dollar right now at 103.68. And yeah, interesting stuff. Our man Jimmy in the Tiger's Den posting the positive correlation. That's kind of what we're talking about, right? So don't just assume that because we got a bunch of dollar weakness out there that you're going to get a gold spike because that has not been the case, man. We have seen that as the dollar has strengthened to 104 recently, right? We've seen the dollar strengthen over that time. And meanwhile, today, what do we have? We have basically dollar weakness, and you have the gold contract. Almost flat, up by $2. Boy, but if they were inversely correlated, which is usually how they are, okay? In the long run, they have to be inversely correlated to some degree because if you're buying gold in U.S. dollars that are stronger or weaker, that's going to impact what you're – but not in the short term. That's not how they have to be, man. Not how they have to be at all. So watch that one on the gold contract. I know you got a lot of – we got a lot of gold bulls out there, man. And don't just assume if we get a drop-off to dramatic degrees in the dollar that somehow that might be the next dramatic leg up for gold because it's defied logic recently. I mean you just look to where this thing was, okay? You back it up to the dollar. It was the end of September, that this thing was trading at almost 100, okay? Well, you look at what gold has done since the end of September, folks. That's the end of September right there. You were trading at 26.75. So you had the dollar go from 100 to 104. And meanwhile, during that time, you saw gold go from 26.50 up to all-time highs of 28.01. We're trading right now at 27.54. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit of China. This one's interesting, man. Which one are we doing? There we go. U.S. chip tool makers move to cut China from supply chains. This is going to be a constant theme going forward, folks, no matter who wins on the election. Okay? And it should be. Can't let China take over the world just yet. We need a, uh, you know, and that's where you got to think forward thinking. So it's like I love the conversations of the tariffs, man. People make great points. Do you think tariffs are the best thing for us in the long run? Make the case. You could be right. Maybe there's going to be too much pain in the short term. That's where the conversations are great. That's where they're educated, reasonable conversations, right? Maybe we need 
really hard tariffs to make sure we're protecting the next generation from China taking over. That's a great conversation, okay? But you better believe that those tariffs are basically going to be a tax on consumers, okay? They're not a tax on China. That's where the conversation just defaults to craziness that makes no sense whatsoever. You better believe that it is in the future generation's best interest to make sure that China is not making all the AI tools and all the chips that have to go with it, okay? And so, yes, this is going to be a constant burden on some of those equities. And, boy, you get into the likes of LAM Research. You get into the likes of Applied Material. We'll get into that chart in a moment, okay? But what it's talking about is AMAT and LAM tell vendors to follow new restrictions spurred by the U.S. government now. This could come back to haunt them because they rely on China so much, okay? So chip toolmakers are telling suppliers that they need to find alternatives to certain components obtained from China or risk losing their vendor status, okay? So it's talking about suppliers have to start getting away from China on their supply chain, right? The two Silicon Valley companies make equipment used in the production of microprocessors and are among the world's biggest manufacturers of these tools. But guess what? Who do they sell to? Right? Who do they sell to? They sell to China, man. Percentage of sales by region at the big semiconductor equipment makers, LAM and AMAT. Folks, they're going to have quite the tightrope walk act that they have to pull off to somehow to tell their suppliers to go elsewhere and then turn around and try and sell their products to China. You're talking about LAM? Yeah. How about percentage of sales? 37%, right? Aim at 32% going to China. So how are they going to do it? Yeah, China is the biggest customer for both AMAT and LAM. So I bring this up for those in particular, right? LRCX is LAM. A pullback from 113. We're trading right now down about two tenths. We go a little bit of longer term time frame. Yeah, it's a run up. The chip stocks, they've been on fire up to 113 with at 74. Just keep it in mind. Okay, if you're looking at these two equities, this is going to be a constant headwind when they're doing so much business with China and China is going to be viewed as the enemy when it comes to chips. You look at AMAT, pretty similar chart, right? You spike out earlier at 255, you're trading at 182 right now for AMAT. But yeah, they have some tough problems, man. Finding alternatives to Chinese suppliers isn't always easy and any overt move to sideline the country risks angering policymakers in one of the world's largest markets for semiconductor making equipment. Now, everybody's going to have to handle that, man. You're going to have NVIDIA that's going to have some problems there as well, right? They're going to be trying to sell. Look at NVIDIA. You can't hold NVIDIA down. Even on a day like today, NVIDIA is higher. You were up to almost 140. NVIDIA up by about 1.6% today to 137, but they're going to be facing it as well. But boy, you take a look at LAM, you take a look at AMAT. Those are some big numbers, man, in terms of how they're going to be able to basically meander quite the tightroping act. You have one company, Vico. They make processing systems for the semiconductor industry, and they issued a written directive to vendors telling them to immediately halt the use of any new Chinese suppliers and wean themselves off existing ones by the end of next year. Folks, that is like tomorrow in this world. Moving a supply chain for suppliers from a country like China by the end of next year, you're talking about 13 months, that is like Mission Impossible tomorrow. And you got to know that China, they see how, they see directives like that, and then you have those same companies turning around and trying to sell them that. <clears throat> yeah, the Commerce Department issued rules requiring American toolmakers to obtain licenses before sharing technical details and plans with Chinese suppliers. They were given a temporary license to keep those suppliers and one that expires at the end of 225. This summer, the department made explicit that suppliers outside China were also subject to these controls if their parent company was based in China. Yeah. For the long run, yeah, you better believe that makes sense, man. You know, we can't have China eating our lunch. Like I said, think about protecting the world for Tommy, little Tommy, 40 years from right now. And that's why I love the conversation of the terrorists, man. I love it because maybe some of them do make sense, right? Can't have China. China's China's taken over the EV market, okay? Now, yes, the EV market is not going to be here today, but the EV market is going to be around in 10 or 20 years. Is China going to control it all? That's where some of this stuff does have to make sense in terms of a longer-term perspective on how it plays out. But boy, LAM, AMAT, 
good luck to their next meeting with Chinese officials telling them that they have to keep buying their products at the same time that you have their suppliers issuing directives to cut China out of the market by the end of 2025. Yeah, right. All right. Now, let's jump a little bit of geopolitical to Iran. Yeah. Oil, a little bit higher today. Iran. Now, this one's out last night. Yeah, I was reading it this morning. Iran tells region strong and complex attack coming on Israel. We'll see if they back up the words with action, but not what you want to hear, man. Not what you want to hear in terms of tensions ratcheting up. And yeah, it'll uh, remain to be seen whether the Iranian threats are real or just talk. All right. But yeah, you better believe that there is a risk. We got crude trading right now at barely seventy one dollars. Jump over to crude seventy one thirty three. Just about Friday's high. But there is always a risk of ratcheting up tensions when you're talking about Iran. You're talking about Israel and you're talking about potential strike backs. All right, folks, markets basically flat, slightly in the red. We got Election Day tomorrow. We got Federal Reserve Day on Thursday. We got one more segment, folks. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome back, folks. s and is negative by four. This market just chopping around. going to be hard to see any dramatic moves prior to any of that uncertainty. 
it's been the theme, right? <clears throat> and you got to imagine you're an investor, right? You got to plow into it right now. Get your trades position that you want to carry. Get them positioned today or tomorrow and then see where that trades. You don't want to be in any. That may be the best trade out there is no trade. As we come into this, you're going to see some volatility, man, um, as these numbers start coming down the line. But it's going to be short term. It might be shift to long term that's when all that's going to play out over tuesday wednesday thursday the states in question pennsylvania is always a big one though and as i mentioned right you got to keep in mind that pennsylvania cannot start counting those ballots per their rules designed by their electorate it's a split electorate in the state house you have democrats controlling one side republicans controlling the other unfortunately they didn't fix any of the melee all they had to do was design it so that those early ballots could have been counted ahead of election day they didn't do that and they set the stage. Remember that. They set the stage. That could have been done for that delay in Pennsylvania coming down the line. And it is going to matter, I'm sure, with this tight, uh, close call on the election. All right. We'll see where we go. Let's check back in on yields before we finish it up, man. Keep your eye on yields. We got the 10-year right now at about 4.27%, far off the 4.3 at we were sitting at on Friday. And yeah, you got to love it, those gold bulls, man. Talking about the dollar, right? Talking about gold. Great points in terms of the correlation. And yeah, we got the dollar, man. Pretty weak. 103.71 right now in that dollar. And we finished it up with gold. Gold up by about $3 at 27.52 with the market basically flat right now. S&P's negative by just one point. NASDAQ negative by 35. And you get the Dow off by 118. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. I see him in the Tiger's Den out there getting ready for the Tiger Technician's Hour next. And I'll see you tomorrow morning for Election Day coverage at 9 a.m. As I mentioned, uh, it's going to take some days to play out. Have some patience, folks. Thank you again. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up next, folks. Have a great Monday, everybody.